I've got come to the Global Tropical Array for June the 29th, 2023. As is always the case in these videos, the Atlantic pressure are mine alone, and when making decisions ahead of any tropical cyclones, look towards your local weather office, local emergency management, and local tropical cyclone warning center. So across the tropics today, we have two systems that we're going to talk about. We're not going to talk about the Atlantic system that is unlikely to develop as we have more significant threats, primarily with now Tropical Depression 2, likely being named uh, at the next advisory from the National Hurricane Center. But we have two systems to watch now. And we're going to quickly talk about Hurricane Adrian here. You can see it's looking uh, a bit better today. We can see in visible satellite a little bit of an eye trying to maybe clear out a little bit on visible satellite. Now, last night, the storm really struggled. We noticed that uh, part of the eye wall that it had built had actually completely opened up. And that was likely a function of some dry air being entrained, uh, helping, helped by the wind shear that it was facing. Now, there is some wind, still some wind shear that the system is uh, dealing with but in general the wind shear is still low it was it was low yesterday and now it's still low now it's got about uh, say 12 to 18 hours still before uh, well uh, 12 to 24 actually uh before wind shear really starts to kick up and also sea surface temperatures start to really decline in uh in terms of favorability now here's the gfs this is 24 hours out, and you'll see at this point uh, there are a couple issues for Adrian here. We can see increasing easterly flow uh, east of the system. This is going to start that increase of shear that will, alongside the cooling sea surface temperatures, likely degrade the system overall. Now, here's the sea surface temperature plot, and you can see the system right now is over 28 degrees Celsius. Water is fairly warm, but as it goes further westwards, it's going to quickly move into much cooler sea surface temperatures. In fact, you can see, uh, even in this visible satellite loop, you can see decreased cumulus on the northwestern side of this satellite loop. That, in that indicates the cooler sea surface temperatures that this system is heading for. So its time is limited. It could still strengthen a little bit, maybe getting to a peak of uh, 90 miles per hour, maybe 100 if it pushes real hard. Uh, I should mention, by the way, the winds right now are about 85 miles per hour. But in general, this system is running out of time, really, to intensify too much more. And again, that is not going to be a big threat to Mexico. This is mainly maybe some higher surf right now along the coastline of Mexico as the system pushes out. But that is not the main threat to Mexico. We are watching now tropical depression 2 this uh it looks like on the, on atcf this system has received a name uh we'll see if that holds by the next advisor for the national hurricane center i would assume it would uh, it looks pretty much like a tropical storm on satellite we haven't had any ascat passes to confirm it they've all missed the center but you can make a good assumption right now that it would at least have winds of say 40 miles per hour on uh the the current estimate now, if we look into the actual storm itself, you can see uh, we have some southerly winds like we did yesterday on the eastern side. We've got uh, some winds wrapping around into the circulation on the western side. We've also got those westerly winds on the southern side. That is already a pretty good case for tropical storm already. Uh, but if you look down beneath the clouds, you can actually see a little bit of a clearing there. And if you look under there, you can see actually some signs of a vigorous rotation down there, indicating a well-defined low-level center underneath this convection. Now, this system is going to be in a fairly favorable environment. Now, here's the GFS. This, this is a bit of a story with the GFS and Euro. The GFS is continuing to go a bit stronger on this. The European is continuing to go a bit weaker on this. And you can see, if I get a sounding over the system, the shear is not too strong. There's about 15 knots of shear. Uh, and that mainly comes from the directional shear of it being more southeasterly in the low levels, more just due easterly in the mid to upper levels. But that shear, given a system that may be formidable on the GFS, would likely be able to fend off the shear, similar to a way that Adrian was able to for a time yesterday before the shear actually disrupted it a little bit. Now here's the European solution. You can see it's much, much weaker on it. It does intensify it to a uh, more weak or mid-grade tropical storm before it comes ashore in Mexico. That's another thing they, the, model dif the models differ on. The European makes landfall, the GFS does not. And the re really the main thing deciding landfall 
is intensity from what I can see. Now, here's a cross-section plot over the storm on the GFS. Now, I'm showing you this because I've, I've talked about this several times before, that when you get a stronger storm like a hurricane, you get more thunderstorms towering up into the troposphere. So you can see we have thunderstorms blowing up, in some cases upwards up, up to the top of the troposphere on the model here. Now, it's important as well to note that the, these storms will take the net flow of whatever the troposphere steering flow is. Now, here's that same sounding I just showed you. And you can see in the low levels, we've got some southerly winds maybe turning more northwest or southeasterly, sorry, in the low levels as you get towards, say, getting to the mid levels. Now, if you get towards the mid to upper levels, you start to get more winds out of the easterly direction. So in the sense that I'm trying to describe here, if you have a weaker system, it's going to be having more of a net flow going northerly towards Mexico. But if you get a stronger storm like the GFS depicts, it's more likely to feel that easterly flow. So it'll have a push away from Mexico. Now, even with that, this system is very close to the coastline on the GFS model. So you still would get significant impacts here regardless of that. Now here's the GFS ensemble plot. So you can see just that pretty much every model is intensifying this to a significant degree. And you can see the consensus keeps this generally offshore of Mexico, but we see some ensemble members getting a little bit closer. And even down the line, uh, down in uh, the Baja California Peninsula, Cabo San Lucas, you could be getting some impacts here. This system could make a very close pass to Mexico and then recurve very close to the coastline of Baja California. Now, the sea surface temperatures in this part of the ocean are very cool, and I can show you this probably on the map that I got you. Yeah, here. You can see that they're very quickly decreasing as the system comes northwards. So we're not going to expect, you know, a strengthening storm coming for Baja California, but you could still see some significant impacts here. Now, here's the uh, general model track guidance, and you can see the consensus here has the system getting very close to the coastline of Mexico and then recurving off the coastline of Baja California. And this is generally the track that the National Hurricane Center has taken. Here's their forecast track here. You can see following that consensus. And you can also see they're sort of taking a middle ground here between, uh, say, the European and uh, the GFS, showing a weaker hurricane. I say weaker, but it's a a low end hurricane here that they're de uh, depicting on their forecast cone that seems reasonable with the current uh, current environment that's going to be in and assuming this system stays offshore it would it would make sense that this system could at least become a hurricane before sea surface temperatures and uh, atmospheric conditions start to decrease as it heads towards Baja California. But you can also see tropical storm warnings here for a good chunk of the Mexican coastline and also hurricane watches up the coastline in central Mexico. As there does lie that possibility that, the, that again, the system becomes a hurricane. And if it is a weaker hurricane, you could still see this system perhaps maybe wobble a little bit more northerly on this cone. And you could see the system come ashore or just scrape the coastline as a hurricane. And that would be a very significant impact event for Mexico. So this is a significant threat for Mexico. And for those along the coastline, it's very important that you pay attention to your local weather office and local emergency management. They're going to have the best information on what you should do ahead of this storm. Of course, if you're going to the beach, uh, just ahead of the storm or even after it, make sure you uh, see what the risks are at the beach. There may be uh, rip current risks and high, higher surf than normal, but especially as the system comes through, it's not recommended that you go to the beach if, the, if there's a hurricane just offshore. But we're, we're, we're going to be watching the system for the next several days. You can see uh, past this weekend, the system clears out, and it should be a pretty nice week uh, next week. I'm not really seeing many signs, at least right now, of tropical cyclone development next week, so it may be more quieter next week as we go into uh, the July, that, that's weird to think about. July is next week. I didn't realize that until now. Uh, but that's all that I've got for today. Again, I'm not mentioning the Atlantic system because it's just a, a very low end chance of developing. And again, it could bring some impact to Bermuda, but they're uh, going to be more so just the general thunderstorm uh, risk there in Bermuda. But that's it for now.
Thanks for watching.